Bitcoin is collapsing and the stock market is collapsing and we have runaway inflation and we have very high fuel cost and we're having impending food shortages. Right now is the beginning of very long-term economic pain. Um, one of the things that has created this situation is America isn't what America used to be. Let's take 1960s, we launch a rocket with men in it to the moon. That was a moment of American pride. We were collectively proud. There were kids across the country studying rocket ships, thinking about going to college to be an astronaut. It was a different America. What we have now, and this started with the breakdown of the nuclear family, is a bunch of Instagram wannabes. Because I was looking at Instagram and there's this girl by the name of Shelby Church. She makes some interesting videos talking about things and Shelby seems to be a really nice person. Um, however, looking at her Instagram and looking at multiple Instagram accounts, you see snapshots of the good life. You see snapshots of dinner dates. You see snapshots of vacations, of being on yachts. These moments encapsulated. And you don't see real life. Like once again, I think Shelby is a nice girl. I also think because Shelby makes so much money that Shelby's pretty hard to date because this is something else that has thrown a monkey wrench in the country. We have a lot of women who are making substantial amounts of money and most of these women are undateable because of hypergamy. And this is one of the things. So you will see all of these people on Instagram and YouTube and like what I like to call the rise of the young buck. There's numerous articles on Medium and YouTube, how I became a millionaire at 21 and how I became a millionaire at 22. Statistically, the average age of a millionaire is 62 years old. However, if you consume a lot of social media con content and you don't do any independent research, you will begin to think that all of these young people are fantastically rich, they don't work that hard, and more importantly, you think you can do it too. All right. This video was brought to you by B-School for Hustlers, home of the Intellectual Property School. What is that? Intellectual Property School will teach you how to make a small YouTube channel and make a lot of money. We'll teach you how to write a book. We'll teach you how to do content. Essentially, what I've done, I've written a book, I have multiple YouTube channels, I have online courses, and I make a lot of money from affiliate marketing, or I could if I chose to. And I'm gonna teach you all my dirty little secrets because every day on YouTube, I see people who are doing the wrong things with their YouTube channels. There's a girl, baddie with a business, and she says, she put out today that I will never charge you, I'm trying to bless you, and this is the lesson that she missed. You know, years ago, I used to think like that. And I was taught that when people get stuff for free, they don't appreciate it. I was giving away 19 business courses for free. I thought people would jump in, get my business courses, and then buy, make money, then buy my higher prices. What I found out that 95% of these people did not take advantage because it was free. 5% did, 5% were really grateful. And what she doesn't understand is if they don't have any skin in the game, they're not going to perform. So once again, go ahead, sign up for Intellectual Property School. The link is below. And currently during the pre-launch, I have a 65% off sale on the original price. Now this is what's gonna happen. I'm probably gonna start dropping training 
in there next week. But you can get 65% off of the course until the end of July. It's going to be June, July, th June 30th. You will be able to have that. And then we will begin to rock. We begin to cook. I'm probably, uh, there's this guy. I can't think of his name. I can see him. He has this program called School. I'm probably going to buy that. And that's where our meeting group is going to be. I'm going to start a not, a, not a Facebook group. Facebook groups are disasters in my opinion. But this is going to be school. It's, you know, where we can have conversations, where people can congregate, and where the people can have the community. Now, one of the things, a lot of people want to ask me questions. Let me say something. In 2020, I made $3 million dollars without talking to anybody. So in my mind, I know I can make money without talking to you. And I've had many people who would ask about this, 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 this. They left their phone numbers. And I know that it's a dead end. It is a dead end. This is why I consistently market in my YouTube videos, create these commercials to let you know what's going on. I'm not talking to you because I'll tell you a quick story. Years ago, when I was selling my storage auction book, I talked to a guy on the phone for three hours. At the time, I was selling the book for $19.99. He did not buy that book. He did not buy that book. So I have empirical data that tells me talking to you is typically with a high likelihood, about 97% is going to result in you not buying shit. You want to know why? Because the people with the most questions, the most, they're trying to prove a thesis. They, and this is where the problem starts because when I made my first million at the age of 42, I was extremely fortunate and that was really early. That was 20 years early based upon stats. And one of the things that we have going back to the 1960s is a lack of intellectual curiosity. Today, I had someone said that I sell self-help pamphlets. And this is one of the things that my haters love to do. They love to come to the channel, view a snapshot. There is no intellectual rigor. There is no investigation. There's no analysis because my stuff isn't hidden. B school for hustlers isn't hidden. Glendon Cameron school isn't hidden. It is easy to go there and say, Oh, this guy teaches training curriculums. No, this guy put self-help pamphlets because he is part of the new rising of the young buck. Like once again, here's my thesis on cryptocurrency or investing in the stock market. My thesis is that if you have a successful small business, you that's the fastest path to get rich. That is my thesis proven by my life, proven, proven by my accomplishments, proven by documented YouTube videos, proven by receipts. So there's tons of accurate, provable data. But here's the thing. The young bucks don't care. This is why we're in for an extremely, um, I, I estimate the next 10 years are going to be a bitch because the rise of the young buck doesn't care about facts. The young buck only cares about the hype cycle, Instagram, Twitter. I will never do a TikTok account. You want to know why? Go ahead and Google the effects of TikTok on the brain. It is inherently been proven over and over again that TikTok makes you stupid. It lowers your attention span. I know this, so why would I go to a platform that I know that if you consume my content on that platform, it's going to harm you. I am an ethical content creator. Now, what does that mean? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to misrepresent the truth and I'm not going to sell you some bullshit. I am an ethical content creator where many content creators, I'm not going to say that they're diabolical but they're not ethical because they will place content. And also many of the creators haven't done the research that I've done. So they don't actually know that TikTok is harmful, that they don't know this. So I will never ever start a TikTok channel. I will never ever do it 
because I know the ramifications is TikTok will create a mental environment that is unhealthy and will destroy your ability to get rich in the long term. Uh, one of the reasons that we're in for long term pain. The woman that I'm dating came from a two parent household. Her parents are still married and she had a healthy respect for men. Once again, to you young guys out there who are dating, you're in a marketplace full of savages. A savage is a woman who is unfit to be a girlfriend, unfit to be a wife because she doesn't know how to act. Often due to no fault of her own, she is unprepared. And this is what's really why we're in for the long-term pain. And I'm gonna tell you why I think we need the long-term pain. She is not interested in learning how to be a good girlfriend or wife. There are some women who know that they have a problem and they're searching out for solutions. So kudos to those women. But there's a bunch of women who think that they're perfectly fine. You wanna know one sign of a girl who's unfit to be a girlfriend? If she comes over to your place and you have sex and she immediately leaves, whether it's two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, this is a chick who cannot deal with emotional intimacy. She is unfit to have a long-term relationship with you can, you can hit it. You can skeet all up in it, but you could never make this woman a proper girlfriend, let alone a wife. And this is one of the reasons. And also dudes, this is one of the reasons that we're in for the long-term pain. Many men abdicate their responsibility to be a leader, a protector, and a provider. They want nothing to do with it. They just want to hit it, quit it, and find another one. They don't want to build families. They don't want to have children. They don't want to build communities, which is direct contrast between the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. I want you to think about something. When you were a kid, and you would go to your aunt and uncle's house and you would see the pictures, you saw this over and over again. You saw an extremely handsome man married to an average woman. You wanna know why? <clears throat> I was, um, I'm building some playlists called Classic Fucking Music. And there's a picture of Etta James and James Armstrong. And due to the society that we have today, Neither Eddie, Ella James or James Armstrong would make it today because they don't have that visual appeal. They don't have that look. Ella is overweight. James looks like a nerd. They would not make it today because they, even though they are deeply talented and very ethical, competent people, they do not have the superficial appeal that they would need to be successful today because the culture has flipped. Like once again, just think about how many times you saw this picture of your aunt and uncle and your uncle had the afro and your aunt and she was a normal looking woman, but she was a good woman. She was a great mate. She was a great mother. She was a good friend. This is something else. And ask yourself, how often do you do this? When I was a kid, it was common for people to go visit people. Go visit a neighbor, go sit on the porch, talk for a minute. This was common. Ask yourself, when is the last time you went to visit a friend? Ask yourself, put this in the comments, the last time you went to visit a friend. The breakdown of America and the rise of the young buck is one of the reasons that we're gonna have long-term economic pain. I predict this is gonna be a 10-year cycle. This is just the beginning for Bitcoin. Like I predicted, once Bitcoin broke 20, the crash was going, because what's, what's going to happen is right now you have a few Bitcoin whales. These are some people who bought Bitcoin 10, 12 years ago. They got Bitcoin for 100, 200, 300 bucks. And they're like, whoa. And as Bitcoin starts crashing, they're going to start taking profits. And when you have two, two whales, two whales, 
liquidating at the same time can literally crash the Bitcoin market. And it's going to happen. And Michael Saylor, he's going to experience a margin call. So what I feel happening in the next 30 days is we're going to see Bitcoin go to 12 or possibly $7,200. Biggest crash ever is coming for Bitcoin. And one of the reasons is the lack of intellectual curiosity. I have provided receipts. I've provided proof of my thesis, but the young buck, I don't want to hear that. You're old. You're not with the new crypto thing. You don't understand DeFi. You don't understand the blockchain technology. I don't give a damn if you're rich. I don't give a damn if you have more money than me because I am smarter than you because I am investing in crypto and you're not. That mindset, the lack of intellectual rigor, the lack of critical analysis is the reason that we're going to have a 10 year window of long term economic pain. Because one of the things that these people have done is they've loaded up on crypto using debt. And this is where it's going to be. I, I've like you haven't even begun to see the bloodbath that's going to happen in the crypto market. You're going to see many crypto tokens go to zero. You're going to see a lot of people panic sale, therefore locking in their losses because it's going to be very ugly. And I suspect within the next 30 days, this cycle will begin. Then you're going to see an equal level of carnage in the stock market. The stock market is down and people are freaking out. At the moment, the stock market has been down for the longest period of time since the Great Depression, 90 years. It has just begun. Why? Real economic fundamentals have entered the room. Right now, people are in that position. And this is a sad position. You can have someone who is living in a house and they've lost their job, they've exhausted their savings, and they're in a position where they're gonna be foreclosed on. And they're in a position where their car is gonna be re repossessed. We're gonna see this type of activity across America. We're gonna see millions of people experience foreclosure, repossession, and homelessness. And this is part of that cycle because this is why I say the pain is necessary. I, many, many years ago, used to be just like you. I had my head up my ass. I didn't understand how to create value. I didn't understand how the money works. I didn't understand none of this. And I was perfectly content to go to my job, work, get a paycheck, come home and live like that. The pain is going to produce different levels of activity. It's going to produce a mental shift because that's what happened to me. When I went through that pain of being homelessness, that pain of living in a boarding house, every moment of my life, I was in pain going to work because it was a bullshit job. I was in pain where I lived because I lived in a room with no heat or air. I was in pain because I didn't have no money. All of that pain produced a transformational shift. And this is why this long term window of economic pain, I feel is going to be good for America because it's going to root out the young buck mentality. Because once again, I said it before, right now we got many men like this. They come on YouTube, they have podcasts, and this is their presentation, hat to the back, a slick talk, and they, they're in a hype cycle and they feel that their confidence is based on success that is produced from a hype cycle, not real innovation. So the young buck is going to get an attitude adjustment. The female savage is about to get a serious attitude adjustment because once again, I said it before in the next 10 years, you will see more women selling pussy than you've ever seen in life. And if you want to go ahead and get some, you're going to be able to do it for 50 bucks because that's how desperate these women are going to be. 
they will do whatever you need to do for 50 bucks because they're going to need money. And the young bucks, many of them are going to collapse. Many of them are going to collapse. They're simply going to collapse because they are building their things on a hype cycle without an understanding of economic fundamentals, without an understanding of how life really works, without an understanding of the reality of life. These young bucks are going to go through a serious transformational shift because right now in America, because of all the support systems that we have and all the things in the system, you can be a bum and make it. You can have a place to live. You can have food to eat. You can drive some female's car right now. But as the, the economy melts down, you're going to see who are the real winners. You're going to see, because there's, there's people in the stock market who've been through this before. There's a bunch of old guys. They've been through three, four recessions. They know exactly what to do, and they're going to make a lot of money. But the young buck, the Instagram young buck, the female savage who have built their full confidence on the inner, the superficial internet presence with no real substance are going to collapse because once again, and this is something that's happening with what's called the influencer economy. Brands are starting to pull back. Brands are not paying these people. And a lot of folks who got addicted to that YouTube money, that influencer money. And I'm going to say it can be quite significant. I have a friend who's a female. And she gets $25,000 to do a brand deal. And she typically does one brand deal, sometimes two per month, because she's very cautious. The brand deal must fit her audience. And she will not take a brand deal that is not in her audience's best, best interest. So she makes $300,000 a year from brand deals. And she makes about $400,000 a year from YouTube. So that puts her at $750,000. This chick is 25. And one day we were at lunch and we were talking. And I said, what are you going to do when this is over? And she said, what do you mean? You know, there's a life cycle for a YouTuber. It's typically five to seven years. And she said, I have no idea. And I said, are you saving your money? She has a penthouse. She drives a Ferrari. And she spends money. And I was like, how much money do you have saved? She said, maybe 200000 So she's spending this money just as fast as she gets it. I was surprised that she even had 200000 based upon knowing her and seeing how she spends. And I'm like, what are you going to do? You're 25 now. If you live long enough, you're going to be 30. And one day, this is going to be over. And she said, why do you say that? Prince. Prince actually kept going on until he died. Michael Jackson kept going on until he died. These are rare, very rare cases. But Jerry Seinfeld, two men in the, it, it was over. Uh, not Jerry Seinfeld, the, what was that? The Seinfeld show. It was over. Friends, it was over. You reach a point where the run is over. I am going to reach a point where, well, actually, I don't think I'm going to reach a point where I think my run is over. And one of these things is I consistently adjust. I don't just like keep doing something, just keep doing it because I've been doing this for 13 going on 14 years. So what I will do is make adjustments in the future where I can do this for another 10 years because I've been doing it for 13. I have my YouTube career has existed twice as long as the average YouTube creator. Graham Stephan, there's going to come a day where He's just going to stop making videos. Uh, meet Kevin. It's going to come a day where he's going to stop making videos. Uh, it's just going to come. It's going to come. And I was talking to her and I was like, do you want to get married? And, she, and this was this was an interesting conversation. She says, I can find a man to fuck me, but I cannot find a man that I respect because any man that I want to respect, he needs to have a business. He needs to be doing so essentially because you make seven hundred thousand dollars a year, the man that you would uh, submit to needs to make two to three million. She said exactly. So she has priced herself 
out the dating market because how many 25 year olds are making $750,000 a year? You know, if, you know, at one point she was dealing with another YouTube influencer who makes more money than her and that kind of worked, but he, he, he upgraded. One morning he got a text. He says, Hey, I'm breaking up with you. And he sent her a picture of him being in bed with a younger, prettier chick. It crushed her because here's the thing. If you are not ingratiating yourself to your mate, you will be replaced. Honestly, I'm going to tell you what happened with me. Um, once again, I, I, I don't have a pregnant girlfriend. That was a social media experiment. But in my life, I had a main chick and she started to display behavior and she didn't do anything really, really bad. But she started to display behavior that made me promote the chick who was in fourth place. The chick in fourth place has uh, been promoted to the first chair, so to speak. And the chick who was in the first chair is now in the second chair. And we were having a conversation today and I was just telling her and she she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it because, see. This is one of the things and for the men, when you have a woman who is dissatisfied or explaining or displaying certain attributes, do not fight with her. Do not beg her. Actually show her what you can do. So I showed her what I can do and I just told her, I was like, you're now in second place. You're my second hoe. And she says, I don't like that. I was like, hey, I mean, if you got to go, if you know, because there's another dude in her orbit. And if you want to give it a shot with him, please knock yourself out because um, this other chick has been promoted. And she was like, she's she's very unhappy at the moment. And she doesn't realize it was because like once again, I have options. I don't have to deal with bullshit from women. I don't have to deal with not being treated the way that I want to be treated. I don't have to deal with it because I have options because I put myself in the position to have those options. So I don't I, I, I can't remember the last time I had a fight with a woman. If we're not happy, you want to leave. There's someone else out there who will do what I need them to do. This has been my experience in life. And this is what you're going to find out for the true high value men, not the men who think they're high value. But the men who are truly high value, who know their worth, will have options out the ass during this 10 year period. They will have tremendous options, tremendous options. And what's going to happen is the young buck is going to go through a transformation because the young buck's going to fall down and hit his head. And the female savage is going to go through a transformation because she's going to fall down and she's going to hit her head. <clears throat> and it's going to get really, really painful. It's going to get uh, quite ugly. We're going to see a lot of carnage. Like once again, what you're seeing with crypto and what you're seeing with the stock market, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And you've got people running around as if their hair is on fire right now. So once again, just take this strong cocaine. And this is funny. YouTube has limited all of my strong cocaine videos. The first one kind of slipped through, then they went ahead and limited. I'm going to do some more strong cocaine videos, but I'm just putting this out there that due to the lack of intellectual rigor and intellectual curiosity, America has declined. And we, instead of having curious, ambitious, hardworking young men and women, we have all of these savages who are looking to come up any way that they can without providing any value. It's all about securing the bag any way that you can. In this building, there are so many chicks with that BBL. And I mean, I can, I've can i become to the point where I can instantly spot that surgery because they'll get on the elevator and they will have these big bodacious titties. They've had this little waist and their hips would jut out at a 90 degree angle. And their butt doesn't move naturally. It doesn't move naturally. So yeah, we're in for it. It's going to be really, really rough for the people who don't have a business. And to my entrepreneurs and business people, 
stay the course. It's gonna get a little rocky, but one of the things that you wanna do is make sure that your debt loads are really low or non-existent, because that's gonna help you. Because as long as you have good, strong cash flow and low debt, you will be able to weather the storm. But if you have a lot of debt, it could be, it could be game over for you. Because this is one of the reasons, because I looked at my debt and currently I will share with you all my debt. I did take the EDAL loan for 150,000 and I did finance a car for the Toro business. That is the extent of my debt. My EDAL monthly payment is $610 and my car payment is 500. So currently my income will fluctuate between 30 and 50,000. So that is one thirtieth of my gross revenue to satisfy my debt or in a good month where I'm up to 50, which probably be July. So that'd be one fiftieth of my overall revenue. So my debt loads are quite manageable, very manageable. And I'm going to pay off the convertible and I'm going to sell it because uh, selling it will be easier if it's paid off. So I'm going to pay it off and sell it. And now entrepreneurs, this is the time to build a business. This is why I've created Intellectual Property School. And I've had people try to, and, all right, let, let's just put this out here. If you don't have more money than me, I am not gonna listen to you. And that may seem dismissive and disrespectful, but here's my mindset on that. If you were smarter than me, you would have more money than me. Let me say that again. If you were smarter than me, you would have more money than me. If you were smarter than me, you would be living better than me. That would be proof positive of the concept that you're smarter. I have friends who are smarter than me. I got a friend who's worth close to half a billion dollars, 70 years old, smart as shit. And he tells me something, guess what? I listen. Because he, he has more money than I do. And I got probably eight or nine friends who are way wealthier than I am. And when we sit down, I listen to their life experiences. I don't try to check my friends. It's like, well, I was putting up my uh, business model with one of my more astute friends and he. <clears throat> I was presenting my business plan to one of my friends who is wealthier than me, he's older, he has more years as an entrepreneur, and he kind of pokes some holes into it. And I came back and I worked out the numbers, and guess what, he was right. I did not try to check him or question him. I said, okay, let me go back and rework my numbers. And I called him up and said, you are absolutely right. Thank you for that, those insights and those wisdom. See, this is why the young buck and the female savage are gonna fail, because you can't tell them shit. I'm young, my titties are firm, I'm young, I got a 12 inch dick, you can't tell me shit. But I can tell you this, if you live long enough, you will get old and your 12 inch dick gonna stop getting hard, your firm tits are gonna get soggy and you're gonna have to face the consequences of life. Because one of the things that I look at, and this is kind of something else with my rotation, uh, my number one, she's extremely beautiful, long hair, great tits, but she's a snacker and she's gained weight since we've been together. The one that has replaced her is 140 pounds. Um, that kind of played a role because I'm like, because you're, you're, you're Snickers away from being a fat ass. And, you know, another 20 pounds, she'll be there. She'll still be cute, but she'll be real chunky. And the one she got replaced with is a track horse, a thoroughbred. She walks around here. So the other night she was in lingerie and heels and stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Because I was making my decision based upon what I like versus how I'm treated. And when I boiled it down, it's like, what feels best? And once I actually did that analysis, it's like, she got promoted. 
She got promoted. Uh, the other night I will share, and I know the moist men, we had sex twice. And see, this is something else. I'm 55 years old. When I was married, I can easily have sex three, four times one night. As I've gotten older, that has gone away. So I thought, so I thought, my new number one, we had sex twice one morning. I was like, whoa, what is this? And you know what it is? It's her passion, it's her energy. She completely adores me. And this is something else, fellas. If you were the woman who doesn't adore you, doesn't like you, she's gonna treat you like shit. I am not used to being treated like shit. And this woman adores me. She would do whatever I wants to do. And we had a conversation because this is one of the things I actually told her. I was like, you know, I was seeing someone else and um, you've been promoted. You're now my new number one. And you know what she said? Thanks for choosing me. This is the kind of conversations I'd be having with my chicks. You're number one. You've been demoted. And a lot of you don't like that because um, you don't have those options. Because you haven't worked on yourself. You know, it took me years to get here. It took me years to get here. And a lot of you are looking at me and looking at my situation with a lack of understanding, with a lack of appreciation. Because when you say the name Glendon Cameron, you need to put some respect on my name. I'm about to, I'm more accomplished than you. I've done more. To the nerd tribe, I love you guys, you get it, you, you soak up the knowledge, you appreciate me and I appreciate you. But to all of these young bucks, because you, you bought a little crypto and you made a little money, you have made chump change. Let me tell you what I did this month. And this is gonna be come across as a flex to the young bucks, because they hate when I show them up. I bought, spent $17,000 on a new bedroom set. I got a leather bed that's coming. It should be here September. I spent $4,000 on some luggage. And on the 27th, I'm going to put my deposit down on my 20, I don't know if it's going to be a 2022 or 2023 Porsche 911 Turbo S drop top. It's going to be yellow with a red convertible top and a red interior. That's what I've done this week. That's how I get down. That's how I live. And I am not going to be seduced by you cryptocurrency bitches because you, you know, because once again, I've been making money six figures to seven figures for 23 years, but I'm supposed to listen to you living in your crappy apartment, driving your Hyundai Elantra because you bought some cryptocurrency and you feel that's the future. Cryptocurrency will be the future, but it will not be Bitcoin. It will not be Erythium. It is going to be a government-backed cryptocurrency in the future. I guarantee it. Because right now, anyone can create a cryptocurrency, and that's the problem. And you don't even know the deep fundamentals of how to make money. You're caught up in this hype cycle. So, once again, enjoy the decline. The next 10 years, for the people who are properly positioned, are going to be awesome. For the people who have a job, who are in the wrong career, on the, wrong, the next 10 years are gonna suck. They're gonna suck. You're gonna see, because during this global reset, you're gonna see a lot of people get reset. You're gonna see a lot of people um, go downward. You're gonna see, and it, it doesn't have to be that way, but due to the sheer arrogance of the female savage and of the bro, of the crypto bro, you can't tell them nothing because they keep consuming all of this content of exceptions. Graham Stephan is an exception. Meet Kevin is an exception. Andre Jack is an exception. Shelby Church is an exception. My friend who makes up, she's an exception. For every one of those who are making that kind of money, you have 40 to 50, 62 year old millionaires. Statistically, it is, 1% of millionaires are under 35, 1%. The vast majority of millionaires, 45% are 62 and older. And then there's other ones that fall between other age ranges. But once again, you don't know what you don't know, but it's going to be quite rough. And once again, and I got people, 
hey, man, I'll take this bit because I feel it's going to be a good lick. I will take your money and I will have fun with it. Because once again, you need to send proof of funds before we even get into the escrow account. And then I will give you the instructions and then we can put the money up in there. And then we can go. And if you want to give me your money, that's cool. That's cool. That's fun. Because uh, instead of trying to bet me, and this, this is one of the things I find to be deeply and patently interesting. I have shown you proof and receipts. So instead of trying to sign up for a course and learn how to do what I do, mm -mm. and this is the sheer arrogance and the sheer ignorance of the crypto bra and of the male savage and the female savage. You can't tell them shit because they feel that they're so smart. They're so hip. I'm so with it based upon Instagram. And here's the thing. The majority of people on Instagram are fronting. There are some people who have actual real wealth, but the majority of them are front and flexing. And they're portraying a, portraying a lot. And this is one of the things that I have seen because I was looking at Shelby Church's Instagram and I noticed that the vast majority of her pictures, she was alone. And then I was kept a look because I was like, do you have a relationship? And I kept scrolling. And I found a picture of her holding hands with a dude. And as an influencer, understand if you're in a relationship, why you don't announce that because your relationship would be scrutinized. You would have all kinds of stuff going on. So I understand if she's in a relationship while she's keeping it off of YouTube. Like um, I keep my rotation off YouTube. I will never uh, mention names or social medias. I will put nothing because that's for me. And you know, I got a lot of you who want me to interview my rich friends. And I actually had a conversation with a few of them and the older ones all said no. Because, you know, some of them watch the channel and it's like, I see what you go through. I don't want no parts of that. Because here's the thing. And I want you to think about this. You live off Northside Drive in a three, five million dollar house with a long ass driveway. You're eating steak. You, you're, you're taking naps by the pool. You're enjoying your young wife. Why the hell do you want to come on YouTube when you are living that life? There's no benefit for you coming on YouTube because you're all, and this is one of the, they're already rich. They're not trying to get rich. They don't need social media. They don't need social media cred because I got one friend, he and his wife takes a trip every month. They have been, and now it's opened up. You don't have to wear a mask on planes anymore. They've like took four trips last month. And I'm talking about flying first class, staying at four and five star hotels and they've been enjoying life and they're in their fifties. You're living like that for real. Why do you need the adulation of a uh, social media when your real life is that good for real? You don't need social media. My rich friends, the majority of them, I got a few friends who are on Twitter and they're on Twitter for the newsfeed. The majority of them, they're not on social media. They can't give a shit about social media. But when you look in your bank account and see 30, 40, 50 mil for real, why do you need social media? Social media is for the crypto bros and it's for the female savages who feel less than. Less than. They don't have anything real going on. So they want to have the approximation of a facade. And it's so sad. It is so sad.